This biome is found on most continents, including the western coast of the United States, South America, Cape Town, the western tip of Australia, and the coastal areas of the Mediterranean. Basically, it's found on any continent between 30 and 40 degrees latitude. The terrain of the chaparral consists of flat plains, rocky hills, and mountainous slopes. The chaparral is very hot and dry. Winters are mild at around 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and the summers are hot and dry around 100 degrees Fahrenheit making droughts and fires very common to this area. Animals that live in the chaparral environment have adapted to a dry and hot location by being more active during cooler times of the day, not requiring high amounts of water and also being agile movers throughout the rough and sparse environment. In the Californian chaparral, the apex predators consist of mountain lions, bobcats, coyotes, and gray foxes. Examples of herbivores are mule deer, jackrabbits, and California mice. In Africa, animals that can be found in the chaparral are gemsbok, garanook, meerkat, and caracal. Some of the animals that can be found in the Australian chaparral are red kangaroos and wallabies. The harsh climate of this biome demands a very specific plant population. Plants have developed around getting water. This includes having large leaves to hold water, large shallow root systems to get water, and deep tap roots to get groundwater. They form thickets that are around 5 to 8 feet tall and contain a greasy coating around the woody vegetation that becomes very flammable during the dry summer months. A combination of the dry, arid climate and the dry, flammable plants is a recipe for wildfires. The species that inhabit these areas have also become very adapted to the frequent wildfires in the area as well. With the chaparral being such a dry and hot environment, the biome experiences wildfires very frequently. The effects of the fires can have a serious impact on the environment, including the plants, animals, and humans in nearby towns. The plants, as mentioned earlier, have adapted well to the burning conditions that can happen in the chaparral. In 1977, the revised fire management policy mandated the prescribed fire approach. Prescribed fire is a technique of burning smaller areas of the chaparral to create a patchwork of vegetation. This eliminates the wick for the fire to travel. Soil heating in chaparral fires affects on soil properties, plant nutrients, erosion, and runoff by DeBano and her colleagues it is a past study reporting effects of fire on Southern California. Much of the data was collected via self-containing pyrometers buried deep in the soil that recorded soil temperature. Stylized data curves were then constructed to predict the effects of burning on the physical, chemical, and biological properties of the soil. This study demonstrated that soil nutrients are either lost by volatilization or transformed into available ions by burning. Nitrogen is a nutrient that is volatilized at even low level fires. Other nutrients are made available as highly metabolizable ions that can be used by plants and microorganisms. This is why rapid growing succulent plants will grow after fires. The prescribed fires recommended every 30 years for human safety mandated by the Bureau of Land Management are also a conservational effort to maintain the chaparral habitat so that it is not all burned down at one time, leaving avoidance of plant life to support a community. We discussed that plant populations are well adapted to the periodic blazes of the chaparral. However, burning more frequently than every 30 years would decrease biodiversity by eliminating fire-sensitive plants. But how do animal species react to the periodic and more frequent burnings? Using conservation plans and bird monitoring to evaluate ecological effects of management, an example with fuels reduction activities in southwest Oregon by Alexander and colleagues examined effects of chaparral prescribed blazing on bird populations. They hypothesized that less shrubbery and overhead coverage would lead to a change in bird populations. Conservational studies like this one are investigating how animals respond to changes in their habitat and efforts to modify management such as the prescribed fires. Surprisingly, Researchers found no abundance differences in bird species listed in partners in flight between treated, burned sites and untreated sites. Researchers believe these results are because of the temporal scale of the treatments occurring only every 30 years. 
this helped to maintain a variety of habitat conditions and reduce the impact on species associated with shrub cover. The Bureau of Land Management policy of leaving untreated sections within treated blocks retains habitat for species dependent on shrub cover as well.